Hi, so today's project is I'm going to change out the charger on my on my boat for my trolling motor. Some time ago I upgraded this boat to a pair of 24 volt battle born lithium ion. I have a charger that works. It's a Pro Mariner 20 triple bank, one for the engine and one for each of the tw uh, 12 volt batteries for the 24 volt series pair. And Battleborn told me I could use that, but I also know that it's not optimum. And I've got some of the charge curves and it, it takes a lot longer to charge because of that profile and you have to be a little more careful. At their suggestion, I bought a NOCO uh, Genius, what is it, they call it a Gen Pro, uh, triple bank charger, 10 amps per bank. And they let you run each a bank in a different charge profile. So I can set one up for the starting battery, I can set up uh, lithium for the two lithium batteries, and, uh, and all is supposed to be good. Now the challenge on this Chaparral is that the uh, it's really tight quarters working in, the, in order to get things hooked up. I'm going to have to really crawl into that compartment and do a lot of reaching and we're going to see how good that does. But um, let me show you what I got first here. Um, this is my charger. I ordered um, I ordered this one out of Amazon, but there are numerous places where you could get it. And let's open up the. Let's see what we get here. Take that sleeve off. This is a triple bank with 10 amps on each bank, and those are the three mode switches they show you. Charge on board, and this one is for uh, on board. It's um, water resistant, and they say waterproof. Um, like anything else, waterproof has its limits. Got a, um, a manual and some accessory information, and that's how it's packed. It's really got nice packing around it so it doesn't get hurt. Let's get this pulled out of there. screws to mount it with and, and four sets of cables there's the AC power and three that go to the battery that um, appear to have fuses on them yep 15 amp fuses it looks like double fused it looks like it's fused on each um, on each lead wire and according to the the instructions, it says there's six feet of uh, cable for each one. So that's the unit. It's going to mount here on two different uh, with two those two screws. It's heavy. It's like a pretty nice unit. So this is a 2018 Chaparral um, Ski and Fish. So uh, 21 foot. And so they mount the batteries here, and I replaced the original 20, Type 27 lead acids with a couple of hundred amp hour battle born lithium ion. And I have a, a battery monitor mounted there. And there's the original Pro Mariner 20 Plus charger and that support. And if I measure correctly, I ought to be able to unscrew the charger and drill a couple new holes and mount the new one right there. I think to do that I will probably need to pull out the front battery here to give me a little more room. And the door's a little bit of a challenge but I'm going to probably have to kind of squeeze my body through the door uh, because um, up to the very upper left around the corner where you see all the wiring harnesses disappear there's a terminal block that is where the cables connect 
for the for the starting battery. When you um, the other two are are easy enough because they're right here, but the the contact the um, engine compartment's what ten or twelve feet back, and so the way they manufactured the boat, they put a terminal block with exposed terminals, uh, nuts and studs. It's a dog to reach, so I probably have to crawl in there and to be able to reach that, and that'll be a little bit more fun. But in any case, that's my task for the day. All right, so I got the first battery out and I insulated the terminals. I'll also mention from a safety standpoint, you wanna have, when you're doing something like this, you wanna take all your jewelry off, no rings, watches, anything that you might get across power because you could draw an arc, hurt yourself. Many, many years ago I learned that lesson the hard way working on a car. I got my, my watch band across a brake light switch and man, it, I got a pretty good burn. So you just gotta be real careful. I'm gonna pull the screws out and take that one down. I know eventually I'll have to finish. I got the terminals off this one I'll have to disconnect the other battery as well because the uh, charge connections are are on it as well. So I got to get all three banks disconnected. Next I'm going to try and crawl in the back there and see if I can um, see if I can reach. I'm, I'm going to take the charger down so I got a few more inches and then I'm going to try to get in there and see if I can reach that connection. So just for reference that's the one I got to get unhooked, and it's back about. Well, I can reach it now that I'm laying, got my shoulders through the through the hole in here. All right, I'm making progress, and um, the trick on this is to be very, very careful to keep the battery wiring straight, and keep everything. So I took the old one off and laid it aside, but I haven't undone all the connections so it can't come out yet. I've still got connections on this battery that I need to take apart. And I got the new one mounted. Um, Chaparral did a really nice job and used some of these uh, steel nuts on the back side. So the old one was mounted through the top, through their quarter inch holes that you you put these in and run a screw through from the opposite side and they're stronger than just a sheet metal screw. So I decided to reuse those on this guy. That should work good but it looks like it mounted in there nicely. Now I just have to get the wires run and they're a little extra tricky because of my uh, monitor here. Um, there's a shunt up on the back of the engine or the bat there's a shunt on the back of the battery compartment there Let's see if I can get it in here that down there is a shunt and so in order to get the current measured properly one of my, my front batteries um, the one that I removed here its ground connection re ground return for the charger needs to go to the shunt the ground return for the, needs to go to the shunt instead of to the battery in order to properly pick up the charge and discharge current. That's a discussion for another day, but now at this stage I've got it mounted. I've got the uh, connections made up in the back and back in the front and up to the shunt. Last thing is here to put that um, ground cable on. I always take that off first, put it on last. You really want to make sure you never short across the terminals on these guys because they've got a tremendous amount of power in them. All right, got everything buttoned up, and the only unfortunate thing is I lost my state of charge measurement, but everything's sub buttoned up. I'll just need to get um, my little generator out here and fire it up and and test it and make sure it all works. There's my. Uh, I'm gonna plug in the charger, which ought to come up as standby. See how it there, lights up and says it's at standby. All right. So then the um, I want to make sure I do this right. 
first one, I'm just going to hit once, which puts it at uh, 12 volt lead acid. And then the second one, I'm going to put over here to lithium. And then you can't see it probably, but I'll do the same thing there. Here the generator's loading down. All right, they both have a um, single red light on. The, the engine cranking battery is probably going to fill up really fast because, I mean, I was just out with the engine running, so it's pretty well charged. So it's going to try to condition it. The um, The meter view says I'm at 13.16, so she's fired off and, um, and is beginning to charge. So I'm going to let that go ahead and charge, and I'll come back with a separate video and show you how it compares to the Promariner charger and, and how well it worked out. But I want to make it clear that there was nothing wrong with the Promariner charger. Its only uh, limitation was that it was designed for lead-acid batteries. And Battleborn said I could use it. It was okay uh, because it limits off at 14.6 volts. And then if it goes to float, I forget the exact, I think it's 13.6 is a float voltage if you let it run out that far. And I never let it run out that far because uh, they kind of want you not to get into the maintenance profile. They'd rather have you cut it off early. Nothing wrong with that charger. Promar Promariner also makes some chargers uh, that have profiles for lithium. Uh, I just went to the NOCO because that was what Battleborn recommended and it seemed to be a good charger when I did some research on it. Uh, secondly, I mentioned in the video about my battery monitor and I pointed out several things. Uh, here is a picture of the box. I have a separate video posted on you know, some of the things about installing the battery monitor and how it works. Uh, including the wiring diagram. And one of the challenges in this installation is just that uh, the wiring is fairly complex because of the battery monitor. If you take a look at this chart, uh, you'll see that I have down at the bottom, it says Promariner Triple Bank Charger Banks 1, 2, and 3. And now that could say NOCO Charger, but it's Banks 1, 2, and 3, and I had to wire the NOCO the same way. And the uh, the battery, because of the way the shunt is wired, it monitors the current on the whole pack, but uh, because you're running separate banks, in order to get the ma in order to have the state of charge work correctly for charge, discharge, charge, discharge, you need to separate things. So as I say, going back to a separate video, but uh, what I chose to do here is I'm monitoring one battery for state of charge and then both batteries for voltage. So there's one voltage sense that picks up the first battery. There's one voltage sense that picks up both batteries together and, uh, and then connects to that charger. But uh, system's up and running. You can see the NOCO set up really nice and easy. And uh, the nice thing being that I can run both a lead acid and a lithium on the same charger simultaneously. Pretty nice. Well, we'll see how it works and uh, how it charges.